or the group that runs these banks. What spirit is that? The Bible declares what that is. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, I want you to look at that now, because I believe the King James Bible... The other translations, for some reason, have messed this verse all up. Maybe there's a conspiracy there. They've messed this verse all up. The NIV says, for the love of money is a root of all evil. That, that would sort of lead you to believe that maybe money is, or the love of money is not the root of everything that's going on in the world. But I think this Bible nails it. The love of money, not money itself. I carry a little money in my pocket every now and then, buy something here and there for my wife, for my children, uh, or to go to McDonald's with having money is not an evil but the love of money Jesus said no man can serve two masters so once you look at it master one Jesus Christ king of kings and lord of lords master two the one that they're trying to keep secret in this book the beast the antichrist the man of sin the son of perdition Jesus love is free and everything about the gospel is and should be free without money, without price, without cost. Because Jesus already paid the way. Everything about this beast has to do with money. So much so that the mark of the beast is universally tied to buying and selling. And who's going to control that? Those who have a spirit of the beast who love money. Jesus said no man can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon, money. You can't do it. You can't have it both ways. And so really in this, in this uh, sort of talk we're doing here, I'm sort of giving you contrast. Like I, you, I, I like to do that. I like to show you one way and then the other way so that it makes sense to us. The contrast between those who love money and those who don't really care about the things of this world who realize that we have a far better place that lies ahead of us, the kingdom of God. So the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I want you get to get the imagery then of Jesus who descends from Abraham through 42 generations who is hung on the cross and is pierced and is referred to as the man of sorrows back in Isaiah chapter 53. Jesus was then showing the defeat of his enemies on the cross which includes those who love money and serve money and serve the master of money, which is the beast, the Antichrist, and they themselves pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Maybe, just maybe, this mark of the beast has something to do with that piercing that we see going on in 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy then says in uh, chapter 6, verse 8, the Bible says, in having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall. Notice the words here, fall. They that will be rich fall into temptation. There's a falling away taking place and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Now I want to stop right here because I'm giving you the context of this love of money thing. Remember I said earlier that those who follow the beast in the last days, uh, those who are setting up the king, the king that's coming, people are going to choose this king. Why would they do that? Because this king says, you have lust, you have all of these things that you want, I'll give them to you. Just follow me. Isn't that the way the devil operates? By the way, isn't that the reason why some people are choosing the churches that they're going to? Because the church that they're going to, they've chosen this church because this church does not condemn them when they're shacking up. This church does not condemn them or say anything bad about them being sodomites. This church will allow them to live in all sorts of unclean, lustful practices in their life. And that church won't say a word about it. 
Whereas the church that's following the King Jesus and following the scriptures, they're going to say, this is wrong. They're going to say, that lifestyle is unbiblical. They're going to say, they're going to preach to you so that you will repent of your deeds. This church over here says, keep doing it. It's okay. God will love you anyway. They're setting up for the wrong master. And people are choosing one over the other. Back to the scriptures. These lust drown men. I want you to notice the language. Drown men. Stop right here. What is it that drowns men? A flood. There is a flood of ungodliness and iniquity coming upon mankind in the last days. Remember the symbol of the age of Aquarius. He's pouring out the wrath of God in the last days, which is going to drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through, many, through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Six things here that bring us to godliness. Remember the mystery of godliness uh, is six things there. So, O man of God, you flee these things. It's only money. It's only temporary. The, the gold and the silver of this world is, is about to be cankered. It's about to be turned into nothing. Those things that all, all of mankind is clamoring after and in the process setting up the beast, it's all going to vanish and fade away and they will be left with nothing. You, however, following God, can inherit everything. It's all about choice. But that's, that's what the bankers are doing. They're drawing from the greed and the lust of humanity, building a power base in preparation for the king that is to come. It was really interesting because I was looking at, you know, I've seen the symbols of some of these companies, and I looked at the name of one of these banking groups. It's actually a capital uh, banking group, a, a venture capital group. In other words, it's a group of very rich people who want to make more money. They have a billion dollars. They want to make a billion more. So they set up a, a venture capital group. In other words, they will invest money in a new businesses so that they can make more money. Their love is the love of money. They are choosing their master. Their master is the master of mammon or the master of the love of money and all the lust that go along with it, all the greed. Their master is the Antichrist, the, literally the son of Belial, the fusion of the gods and man together. We see that in Daniel chapter 2, Genesis chapter 6. There's that number 6 again. It's interesting that one of these venture capital groups that's present at the Bilderberg meeting is called Perseus. You know who that is? He is a, one of the names of the gods throughout all the mythologies like Apollo and, uh, and Tammuz mentioned in the scriptures who are the offspring of a god and a human woman. This film that came out based upon the book Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Percy Jackson was basically the son of a god, Poseidon, and a human woman. And he wields his uh, three-pronged flesh hook, his trident, the number three, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You can think of the triple helix, the addition of a third strand of DNA to man's two-strand DNA. You see what we're uncovering here about the agenda of the Bilderberg group. Along with the bankers, we have the merchants. Those, those who are controlling the money, the bankers, those who are going to make more of it, and if, and if possible, all of the money. Have you seen have you seen a trend in the last last 30 40 years? Going away are the small businesses, the mom and pop organizations we call them here in America. Um, mom and dads who had a business idea and they started a business, a shoe store, a local shoe store. Um, a local um, uh, radio and TV salesman. Uh, just local this and local that and then you have the big 
companies moving in and either buying them out or forcing them out of business. Consolidation at the top. By the way, this is what you'll see. Start looking around. When you start seeing all the banks conglomerated into, under, under a giant banking umbrella, that's part of it. When you see all the businesses, the big boys buying out all the little boys, that's what you see. You see it in the church realm too. Gone, gone are the local congregations who believe the autonomy of the local church who are following the authority of the scriptures. That's all going away with. Even, even in the denominations, the vast array of denominations in this country, somehow, some way, they're being drawn into this big conglomerate. They're all getting along now with Roman Catholicism and, and even cults through uh, the... Um, Oh, what was it? The Promise Keepers Organization. Some of these big organizations, and I want to caution you, the bigger the Christian or the quote-unquote Christian organization, probably the more corrupt they are, and there's an agenda. Radio stations, local newspapers now are being bought out and being controlled from the top down. This is what you see with the merchants. I see groups like Nestle and Coca-Cola. They're at the Bilderberg meeting. Which really bothers me because there's two things in this world that I really like. And that is, number one, a Nestle's chocolate bar. Pure milk chocolate. I love those. And I love a good, cold bottle of Coca-Cola in a glass bottle. I'm telling you, there's nothing better in the world than a cold bottle of Coca-Cola in a glass bottle. Hard to find anymore. I love those things. They're at the Bilderberg meeting. Why? Siemens, Airbus, other, other companies. Uh, you start looking at the logos, especially of Airbus. You see the two threes there, as above, so below, making the number six or the number 33. Uh, we read the symbols. We say, okay, well, maybe that's... But we're looking at the conglomeration. Businesses who are only concerned about making more money. And I mentioned a spirit that has everything to do with the love of money. And, and I, I want to show you this. So here we are. We're going to contrast again. Let's bring out uh, Aquarian Conspiracy. Okay? Uh, and there's our Triple Helix logo there. Um, same one that you saw with, uh, who was that? Uh, the, uh, the trident there of Perseus. Okay? So we have, the, we, have, uh, we have two spirits here. We have the Holy Spirit, which gives the gospel away totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. The price has already been paid by Jesus Christ at Calvary. But then we have another spirit. Uh, this is the pure love of God through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he sold. No, that's not what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You ever notice that people who have a lot of money cannot handle the fact of giving something away other than it serves them to, to make more money. Why do big businesses give money to charity? Because it's a tax write-off. They don't just give just because they want to give. They give because it has to do with getting them more money somehow, some way. They look to get a return of some kind. That's the love of money. We have a spirit in the Bible called Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. She has a love, too. Uh, the Greeks called it eros. She has a love, too, but it's a love that's not free. It's a love that's for sale. That's why she does what she does. She is for sale. And so all of these businesses getting together, the merchants of the world, the Bible references the merchants of the world, in Revelation chapter 18, Revelation 17 and 18 are two chapters in the Bible that deal with the agenda, the rise, the power, the dominion of the spirit called Mystery Babylon the Great. Thirteen words, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Um, that number stamped upon the back of every one dollar bill that's in America. Um, if Revelation 17 and 18 show her rise, her power, and her defeat. And the people who are wailing and weeping the most over the defeat of Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots, are the merchants of the earth. Verse 7, 7 of Revelation 18. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. Stop right here. because that.